All right, let's continue on in the Odin project for maybe, I don't know, 30 minutes. So <clears throat> let's see. Next lesson. Foundations asking for help. Along your programming journey, you will inevitably need to ask questions in an online coding community like ours or in conversations with your colleagues. While asking questions may seem rather simple, in a programming environment, it is essential to ask well-formed questions with as much context as needed so you can get the most out of asking for help. In essence, help others help you. This lesson will provide you with the tools to effectively ask questions in communities such as our Discord chat, Stack Overflow, or in the workplace. Learning Outcomes By the end of this lesson, you should be able to do the following. Explain techniques for asking programming questions. Explain and avoid qualities of bad questions. Ask effective and well-formed questions. Okay, tips for getting the best help possible. Uh, oh, that looks like a link. Let's see where it goes to. All right, it goes back to itself. All right, tips for uh, getting the best help possible. Always provide your code and the surrounding context. You can ask theoretical, vague questions, but you're going to get theoretical, vague answers that probably won't be helpful to you and cause frustration on both ends as you and the person helping you dance around the real issue. The only time code doesn't need to be provided is if you are asking a purely conceptual question outside of a specific project or code snippet. Additionally, provide as much context as is necessary and zero in on the specific problem, such as pointing people to a specific function or line number in your code so people can give you the most relevant answers and quickly assist you. Ask about the problem at hand, not the solution itself. A lot of learners ask exactly how to approach a given task or assignment in this curriculum, such as below. How do I complete step five of the rock, paper, scissors assignment? Keep in mind that you're actually supposed to figure out how to solve the assignments yourself. And figuring out an approach is essential to your learning journey. A much better question might look like this. Hey, I'm trying to return a string that displays the winner in rock, paper, scissors, but I'm getting a syntax error on line 12. How can I fix this? Here's my code. In sharing your attempt, people know what you've tried and won't suggest things that might not have worked out for you. It also allows them to debug your current iteration of code rather than sending you down a path that has you start all over again when you might be very close to a solution. Now, if you're completely stuck with where to start, it's completely fine to let people know that you're stuck. Asking where you can start and what you can research to get on the right track empowers you to be able to resolve issues largely on your own in the future and might even empower you to help others with the same issue later on. It is also recommended that you share your pseudocode so people can nudge you in the right direction or correct any misunderstandings you may have. Don't take asking for more context to heart. People who volunteer in coding communities are here to help.
But a question you may feel is coherent and obvious probably isn't if you're being asked for more context. While something may seem obvious to a beginner, it's sometimes nowhere near obvious to an expert. An expert knows about many, many more situations that could cause an issue someone is experiencing and would want to refrain from sending a learner down the wrong path. People take time out of their day to help, so make it as easy as possible for them to help you. There's probably a good reason why they need more information. So trust their judgment and experience when they ask. Many people helping coding chats are unpaid volunteers and are in no way obligated to answer your query, but because they truly do want to help you. They will ask for more information when needed. Assignment 1. Read and bookmark this amazing article by Gordon Zhu. That's at medium.com, How to Be Great at Asking Questions. It is a great reference to refer to whenever you find yourself needing to ask for help and you might find yourself solving your own problem as you think about the points listed in the article. The video linked in this article is no longer available, but that is not an issue since we explain debugging in detail later in the curriculum. Read about the XY problem. That's at xyproblem.info, which is a common pitfall programmers new or experienced alike, fall into when asking questions. Check out this article. That's stackoverflow.com forward slash help forward slash how to ask. Check out this article from the world's most popular programming help resource, Stack Overflow. Four, while asking for help is encouraged, it's important to avoid becoming a help vampire and be respectful of the communities or persons you are asking for help. This resource, that's at slash 7.com, 2006, 1222 Vampires. This resource goes in depth to identify what a help vampire is, gives those who help others the tools to empower folks to ask questions effectively, and help the help vampire effectively. Knowledge check. This section contains questions for you to check your understanding of this lesson. If you're having trouble answering the questions below on your own, review the material above to find the answer. Name at least one thing your question should always include. Describe the XY problem. Describe three attributes of a help vampire. All right, I'll have to go back to that and work on that. I'm not going to work on that in the video, although I may post some stuff about that. Let's look at the next lesson. Foundations. Join the Odin community. Introduction. Working and collaborating with other people is an important part of working as a web developer. Therefore, we at the Odin Project encourage you to participate in our online chat community, which we'll talk more about below. By joining the community, you can grow alongside other Odinites and help. I'm sorry about that. Pardon me. Let's go back to the top. Uh, Let's see. Where was I? By joining the community, you can grow alongside other Odinites and help each other learn web development. While you're at it, you can check out our Facebook page, follow us on Twitter, and catch up on Instagram. Use the Odin Project, that's hashtag the Odin Project, 
to share your ODIM project progress, updates, thoughts, and to see what other ODIN students are up to. Why a community is awesome for you. Learning, learning web development will be a long and arduous journey, but you can make the marathon a lot more fun by getting involved in our Discord community. Ha, huh. maybe we should call that ultra marathon. A, uh, a lot more fun by getting involved in our Discord community. No matter what pace you are doing our curriculum, there will always be people a few steps ahead of you that are willing to help. Furthermore, helping others that are a few steps behind you is a great way to deepen your own understanding and make your learning st stick. Uh, yeah, there is that saying that the best way to learn something is to teach it to others. All right, back to the um, text. When you're slogging through the desert of despair, uh, that's a blog at thinkful.com why learning code uh, is so hard. When you're slogging through the desert of despair, where your code doesn't work or even make sense to you anymore, you can find an oasis of knowledge and encouragement in our community. Veterans at the Odin Project love to help fill in knowledge gaps and provide new insights and perspectives on how to improve your code. We've all been there before. Remember that project you struggled so hard to figure out and that you're so proud of finishing. Through our community, you will get to share your work and progress and those who fully appreciate how much hard work went into it. Why a community is awesome for Odin. We are working hard to update existing lessons and produce new content. So we would love to hear your feedback on the lessons and projects. We hope you find the lessons fun, engaging, and informative, and find the projects challenging but achievable. So please let us know your thoughts. Before asking for help, as most of the projects are designed to push you to your limit, please remember that there is always a community to turn to. You don't need to know how to solve every problem straight away, but you do need to have a general idea of where you are going. This becomes really important when asking your questions because sometimes the problem is your approach and not your code. Remember, last section was about questions. If you're feeling stuck, it's a good time to pause and take a breather. Break the problem down into little pieces and then decide what is really holding you back. We call this technique rubber duck debugging. You could look that up on Wikipedia. You should also do a Google search to find relevant information for your problem. Read about how to use Google to solve your programming questions at codingflow.com. Google programming questions. You can also look back at previous lessons for tools that you can apply to the current task. If these methods don't yield a solution for you, then it's time to reach out to the Odin community and ask for help. Hey, remember there's other search engines too that might uh, be helpful. All right, asking for help. So you've spent some time struggling to solve the problem on your own. And now it's time to fire up the Odin Discord and ask for help. The first thing to keep in mind is don't ask to ask. Uh, that's at don'tasktoask.com. While this is a simple idea with a pretty catchy motto, it can help you get answers to your questions much faster and will make it easier to others to feel comfortable offering you help. In addition, when you ask your questions, you should help the community help you by putting together a great question. When asking your question, please remember to include the context. 
What do you think the problem is? What exactly do you want to happen? What is actually happening? How did you get there? What have you tried so far? If you can't pinpoint the problem, you can share a screenshot. This is especially useful for showing the output of commands in the command line. In Discord, drag and drop your screenshot image file into the chat box to upload it or simply use the print screen and paste keyboard shortcuts. If you don't know how to take a screenshot on your computer, this is a good time to ask Google. Screenshots are great for showing the output of commands or error messages in the command line. Screenshots are also great for showing the output from your code, such as how the output looks visually on a web page or console outputs in the browser. However, you should always include the corresponding files containing the error, even if it is a short amount of code. Providing it in the Discord server in the proper format along with a screenshot of the output is helpful to those debugging it rather than just a screenshot. When you do share a screenshot of the output or how it looks visually, make sure to push your project to GitHub or put your corresponding code in a replit. That's replit.com so that others can comb through and debug the code. The screenshot of the output and the correlating code that can recreate the problem will help make it easier to understand the problem for people helping you. You'll learn all about GitHub very soon. Sometimes there might be no one around to help you with your issue. That is the ideal time to get familiar with the Discord search function. Search for specific keywords or error messages to see if anyone else had a similar issue before and how they solved it. Formatting your questions. Asking your questions in a readable format helps everyone debug them better. Here are some ways to go about that. If you're having trouble on the command line, make sure to include both your input and the error message you're getting. In the chat rooms, code can be displayed differently from normal sentences by using back ticks. Uh, that looks like a double back tick, which can be found above the tab key on US and UK keyboards. Back ticks are not the same as single quotation marks which are found to the left of the enter key. For a single line of code, use one back tick before and after your code. For multiple lines of code, use three back ticks on a separate line above and below your code. Your multiple line, oh I see, they put the three back ticks above and below your multiple lines of code. All right, you can also use code highlighting to add color to your multi-line code by specifying the language, like JavaScript, with three back ticks first. Then the lines of co colorful code, and then three more back ticks. All right, chat features. Have fun with Gifis, G-I-F-Y-S, type forward slash G-I-P-H-Y, hi, to say hi to everyone, type forward slash help for more information on chat commands. Show your appreciation to those who help you with at username plus plus. Don't forget to visit all the available rooms. Assignment 1. First create a free GitHub account. As you will discover, GitHub is an integral part of the development workflow. 2. In a moment, we're going to ask you to join the Discord community. 
Here are some guidelines before you dive in. 1. Ping. At user. With a purpose. Only at another user when it's necessary. Include your question or comment in the message. Wait until they reply before pinging again. 2. Don't bomb chats. Don't send multiple messages in a row. Type out your whole message, then push send. 3. Don't exclude anyone. These are public chats. If someone joins in on a conversation, include them. 4. Don't disappear right after asking for help on code. If you're posting a question, make sure you have time to stick around and discuss it with those trying to help. 5. Remember the human. Behind every username, there is a person with feelings. Be kind. If you don't have anything nice to say, don't say anything at all. 6. If you wouldn't say it out loud, don't type it. Plain and simple. 7. Read the rules and FAQ. FAQ. Upon joining, you will find yourself having to read through our rules. Please take the time to read and understand our rules and facts. FAQ. 3. Finally, sign in to our Discord server. There's a link here. Pop in and say hello. We've created an introductions room, which is a great place to introduce yourself, and we're always happy to welcome new community members. We have chat rooms for every development topic covered in our curriculum. Log into the chat and start exploring. Link your GitHub to your Discord profile so others can see what you're working on and vice versa. 1. Discord Settings, Connections, click GitHub icon, Allow Access. Make sure Display on Profile is toggled on. How to help others solve coding problems. Not only is it important to know how to ask an effective question, it is also important to know how to help others effectively. Please take a moment to review these guidelines so that you will have proper expectations of the help you will receive in our Discord community. In addition, come back and review these guidelines when you are ready to start helping others. 1. Instead of answering the question, guide them to the answer. Unless the problem is a simple typo or syntax error, it is more beneficial to guide them to find their own answer. This approach will teach good debugging skills and will increase their ability to solve future problems. Start by asking probing questions, such as, what have you tried or what have you already tried? What do you expect this function to do? Or what do you think that error means? Two, help only when you are certain of the answer. If you're not 100% certain of the answer, you may end up doing more harm than good. So please let someone else answer it. Do not worry about how long someone has to wait for an answer. The right answer is worth the wait. 3. Help only when no one else is currently helping. If somebody is already getting help, do not jump in the middle of the conversation. We know you mean well, but it is overwhelming for the person receiving help to follow multiple conversations. 4. Help only when you have plenty of time. If you do not have much time to help, Please let someone else answer the question. 5. Adjust your expectations to, the le to their level. If the question does not reveal where they are in the curriculum, ask them so that you can adjust your expectations to their knowledge level. 
See, help only when you have plenty of time. Adjust your expectations to the level. Six, ask for clarifications. If the question seems confusing or ambiguous, ask for more clarity or politely link them to our bot command forward slash question, which links to the how to be great at asking coding questions article. That's the GordonZooMedium.com article. Seven, ask for live code. I'll pause this. Okay, sorry about that. Uh, I had to pause for a moment. Where was I? Uh, six is ask for clarifications. If the question seems confusing or ambiguous, ask for more clarity or politely link them to our bot command using forward slash question, which links to the how to be great at asking coding questions article. Okay, I think I read that. That was the Medium article by Gordon ZHU. Seven, ask for live code. If the question needs to have live code to fully understand or debug, ask them to use Replit to provide it. If the problem is difficult to isolate, they should recreate the problem with isolated code. A. Do not answer Googleable questions. Learn how to research. Learning how to research these questions is very a very important skill for developers. So we need to empower them to find their own answer. When we answer these questions, it hinders their personal growth and makes them codependent on our community. Instead of answering these questions, politely ask them to Google their question or use our bot command forward slash Google with the search terms. So yeah, you, sh you Google and uh, maybe Stack Overflow, right? And that other stuff you mentioned earlier? Nine, do not answer questions covered in our curriculum. If you know that the answer is provided in our curriculum, ask them where they are at in the curriculum. If they have not reached that portion of the curriculum, let them know they will learn it in the future. If they have already been through that portion of the curriculum, politely direct to review that lesson. 10. Answer the question before pointing out other problems. When helping someone, it can be easy to spot other problems in their code. Resolve the original question before pointing out any other problems that need attention. 11. Encourage students to use a debugger. It is common for students to not understand the importance of using a debugger to look at the values of their variables at different points in their program. When students are getting unexpected values, politely encourage them to use a debugger with our bot command forward slash debug. 12. Watch for students that need to take a step back. It is common for students to focus too hard on a problem and not be able to clearly see everything. When this situation arises, politely encourage them to step back from the problem and take a break. Oftentimes, stepping away from a problem will help them see the bigger picture and how to solve it. 13. Watch for students that are in over their head. It is common for students to skip a lesson project or think they know more than they actually do. When the situation arises, politely encourage them to go back and reread a section of the curriculum for more understanding. 14. Admit when the problem goes beyond your current knowledge. It is common for the actual issue to go beyond the initial question. If it goes beyond your current knowledge, it is important to admit that you are unsure of the correct answer and let someone else help. After digging deeper into the problem, they might be able to continue troubleshooting on their own, or they can wait for someone more experienced to help. 15. Be patient. Helping others solve a problem is not always easy. Remember to be patient as they struggle through the problem. 16. Duck out of the conversation if you get frustrated. 
Sometimes there are misunderstandings and interactions go poorly. You are a volunteer and are not obligated to help when things get out of hand. Politely duck out of the conversation and let someone else step up. Okay, have to stop there. Lord willing, I'll pick up uh, the next lesson.